I would say that the lab environment and dynamic and your principal investigator, your PI, are like two of the most important factors to keep in, in mind when finding a lab because these are the people that you spend every day with. If there's like unhealthy competition, it can make your day totally miserable. You want to feel like the people in the lab have your back and that they support you. From the cubicle to the lab, the studio to the war room, climbing the corporate ladder or joining a scrappy startup, experience a day in the life of the jobs you want. You're now listening to the Experience a Diddle podcast. You'll hear from professionals, entrepreneurs, and recent grads, all inspiring you to gain experience beyond the classroom and launch a career of your own. We're your hosts, Christabo and Matt Poe. Welcome to episode two of three in the Experience of Diddle podcast, Life in the Lab series with neuroscientist Dr. Tav Wynn. You're going to experience a specific day in the life, hour by hour, of a neuroscientist in her postdoctoral program. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to Tav's experience episode, where she talks more in depth about her career and academic journey leading up to where she is today. So without further ado, let's get started. It's a Thursday morning in New York City. So actually, I will say that um, if we would have done this a year ago, the start of my day would have been like 830. (laughs) (laughs) So so my son now dictates the start of my day, which is at 630. Um, He wakes up pretty much always now on the dot at 630. So once I hear him, then I come and take him and bring him into bed. Um, I nurse him and then um, we cuddle with him for a little bit. (laughs) Ta and her husband take turns getting ready while simultaneously playing with their son. They head out the door around 8 a.m. They divide and conquer. Tud drops off Dylan at daycare, and her husband drops off their dog Riggins at doggy daycare. Most days, you know, we can kind of take our time, and there's no really time crunch on getting him to daycare. But today, you know, we have to get out by 8 o'clock to meet the class. Mm. At 8.30, you know, the boutique fitness classes in New York are like $35 each. So we can't afford to miss yeah. two right. of them, right? Yep. So exactly. it's $70 down the drain. Um, so we take turns getting ready and then we have to leave by eight o'clock to take our son to daycare. And then we meet back up at my son's daycare and we head to Barry's Bootcamp, which is also down the street. And mm-hmm. so um, this class is at 8.30. The Thursday class, um, actually Thursday's an abs class. And um, it's so hard to fit these into our schedule. You know, mm. these are really tough workouts, too. So they're not <laughs> super fun to do. Right. Um, How but, often do you work out a week? You know, like not to like I would it. love to say twice, <laughs> but my husband will be like, you work out once a week. Um, <laughs> that is fine. Week. Twice is definitely my goal. But, you know, like these days, it's once a week. Totally. Um, That's good. Perfect. Yeah. And I guess sort of the thing is, is that, we, you know, like I study the brain and you, there's so much research on how important exercise is for your mental health, um, for your body, you know, like all of these things we know, and it helps mitigate like the effects of chronic stress, which we feel every single day. Um, so it's really important for us to try and find time, even though it's really tough for us to do. So then we take our quick showers at Barry's and, um, Grab there's like this great smoothie bar at Barry's boot camp. So we they're like ten dollars. So collectively it's like a ninety dollar workout plus breakfast, um, which is good business. Model. Which is crazy. <laughs> which is only in New York City. Um, but the smoothies are great. And um, so then we head into work together. And so we're both at Cornell. You know, as I mentioned, this is kind of how we designed our next step from training from his um, residency and my PhD. Mm-hmm. You know, so we both ended up at Cornell, which is awesome. Um, and our buildings are right next to each other. So on the way he drops me off at my building, um, and I start my day. Okay. So I mentioned pre baby, you know, my wake up was eight 30, sometimes even nine, sometimes nine 30, you know, (laughs) and I'm like labs, they sometimes function very late. And Mm -hmm. so in my head, I was like, you know, I don't need to wake up early. So why would I wake up early? Um, so I just wouldn't, um, (laughs) I'm with you. (laughs) So, so I come into lab at 10, but You know, many times if I come into lab at 930, you know, there's no one there, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, you know, like not many other jobs I think would be like that. Ta's first order of business is to schedule time to pump. Cornell has a room dedicated to nursing and working mothers, which is convenient for Ta, but the competition is real to secure a spot every day. It's uncomfortable if I can't get in there. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there's a lot of 
it's not a good situation. So I'm very other competition. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like I come into the room and I see a new bag. So there's a new mom and I'm like, dang it. You know, it's like, there's too many moms in here. Um, so as soon as that's done, then I'll sit there and I'll check my emails and I'll put off maybe for five, 10 minutes when I'm actually supposed to do or start to do. So Tess' first order of business today is working on an experiment. More specifically, she's performing surgery on an itty-bitty mouse brain. And so on this day, um, I'm planning to do surgeries. And so I had mentioned um, these viruses that we inject into the brain. Um, and that's what I'm doing today is I'm injecting this non-toxic virus that allows me to visualize the activity of neurons by um, also implanting a fiber optic in the brain. Um these surgeries, they take maybe um, two or three hours each, mm-hmm. um, and I'm stuck in the basement doing them. And so, you know, like when I get in, I have to gather all of the things that I need to go downstairs in the basement. And, um, you know, there's always a little checklist that you have to bring down. Otherwise, you have to come back at, up and down to get all of the materials that you need. Um, what are those materials? Like what what does that setup look like? So the bag that I bring down, I have a little container of dry ice. I have a container of ice. I have the virus. And then I have my surgery toolbox okay. um, that kind of has everything that I need in there. Gotcha. Do the, like, you say a virus, right? Um, y- you can't actually see these little virus. Is it in a solution? It is in a solution. Okay. All right, yep. cool. Yep. I'm trying to visualize yeah, 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 it right yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yep. <laughs> Well, and just because I'm curious, what color is that solution? Green. It is green. green. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's super bad scientist stuff right there. Well, so it's it's based off of the green, green fluorescent protein, okay. which is the protein that like jellyfish um, and like phytoplankton have for bioluminescence. Cool. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a modified GFP. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's really neat. Science. <laughs> All right, so you're getting all that situated. Um, you're running the surgeries. You said they take how long usually? About two hours to okay. three hours. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Um, what is that work like? I guess are you doing all this with your hands? Is this uh, like on the, a with my hands and under um, a microscope? Okay. It's it called a stereoscope, but it basically and it's not super magnified, but. Um, I mean, this is a mouse brain we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be very precise with Definitely. where you're injecting these viruses. So you need a steady hand. Yes. All right. Shaky yeah, people. So too much coffee not is not good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true too. All right. Going back mm-hmm. to um, your experiment, you said after a few weeks of expression, yeah. it takes a long time for you to get the results that you need, right? Yes. You said about like four weeks or so. So yeah. what do you do? in the meantime, like towards that experiment or do you work on something else? Yeah, I I will work on something else. I'll do analysis of a previous experiment that I've done. Um, These experiments, you know, like from start to finish, they can be like a month and a half. Um, So if I plan it well, then I'll do a surgery before going on vacation or before a conference because I know I'm going to be gone and that's just downtime for virus to express. Awesome. So I just want to kind of go into, um, because you had a lot of, you know, checkpoints that you wanted to hit in picking, you know, a program and then yep. the lab as well. Yep. Like what are the things that people should be looking for that's when a, picking a that's lab? That's a great question. So you'll get a lot of different answers for this as well. You know, people, some people will say, um, find what you want to research and make that your number one. But I would say that the lab environment and dynamic and your principal investigator, your PI are like two of the most important factors to keep in in mind when finding a lab, because these are the people that you spend every day with. If there's like unhealthy competition, it can make your day totally miserable. Mm -hmm. You want to feel like the people in the lab have your back and that they support you. Um, even if they're not your friend, you know, you don't have to be friendly with everyone in the lab, but you have, you have to support that the lab is a family Mm -hmm. and the health of the lab, you know, like everyone benefits from that and having a healthy lab environment is super critical. And the principal investigator, you know, every PI mentors in a different way. And so when I was interviewing at this, um, postdoc, I asked my PI, you know, it's like, what was, what is your mentoring style? And he's, he's a very new professor. And so he didn't have that much. Um, I, I couldn't talk to anyone to kind of get their feedback, but he said, you know, I said, you're new, but what do you envision your mentoring style to be? And I still remember exactly what he said, because I love this statement. He said, um, I like people to work at the limits of their own independence. 
Ooh. Yeah. Chills. I love that. Right? That's um, so cool. Yeah. And so oftentimes in the labs, um, you'll hear people or mentors described as very hands off. And that is what I would call my PI is that they don't, you know, they're not micromanagers. They don't mm-hmm. follow you day to day. They don't stroll into lab to make sure that you're there and doing things. They trust that if you are productive and are showing results at like lab meeting that you're doing your job and you can manage your time properly such that they don't need to be like looking over your shoulder. But there are some people that do benefit from like the micromanaging type. You know, there are people that benefit from having multiple checkpoints throughout their month, even having like weekly meetings with their professors. And so it kind of depends on how you work the best. And that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you need to know that about yourself a little bit. Um, But I know that I work the best with a very hands-off PI, which my PhD advisor was as well. Um, And so I think that being paired with a PI that doesn't jive with the way that you work the best, it's um, it's something definitely to keep in mind because it's not a good situation, I think, if it's not cohesive. Gotcha. So now it's noon. Todd goes out to lunch with a group of lab mates. You know, oftentimes there's always people eating at weird times. um, And so you always have someone that you can eat lunch with. Um, there's this deli on first Avenue with, you know, like those hot bars. You can just grab a ton of stuff there at my internship. There was one right, right down the street and I went there every day. They're amazing. And just such a nice variety of food that you never really have to decide. Go to the same one every week, every day of the week and get something. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like deciding what to eat for lunch is like the hardest decision of my day, like (laughs) every day next to dinner. (laughs) That's a whole nother (laughs) Um, okay. So one o'clock is my pump time. So I have to like scarf down my food and run down to pump. And then, um, the lab that I'm in with a couple of other labs at Cornell, we have the Sackler seminar series. And so every Thursday during the school year, um, people give presentations from the labs. We sometimes invite outside speakers to talk about relevant work. Um, and, Because these are other labs that we're also very friendly with, it's really nice to get feedback from those labs on ongoing research. Um, So it's kind of like a bigger lab meeting where you can get the input of other graduate students, postdocs, professors, and it's really nice to get like outside eyes, especially because the whole process of research is eventually to submit your work to a peer-reviewed publication. Like other people are going to see it anyway, and they're going to judge your work and Excuse me. So it's nice to get that feedback beforehand right. um, to make sure that the paper that you submit is the best paper that you can come up with. Right. Yeah. And you're focusing so much on, you know, the same thing over and over. Exactly. So it's nice to have another pair of eyes exactly. to like and see what you wouldn't see. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Nice. Um, and and like what a reviewer would want. Right. right exactly. Yeah. Um, and then in this seminar, are you giving up? Everyone's giving updates on theirs? No. Or just like, like people take turns? Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's like a schedule um, and different labs have different people. Um present. And so there's nice. today there's an, another postdoc from another lab um that's giving her work and she's doing awesome things and um was a really great example of just everyone kind of talking about the work together in like a really friendly environment. Cool. Um, which is really that's nice. So fun. Yeah. That's great. So uh, now it's time for coffee. Now it's time for coffee. No more mouse mice. <laughs> no more mice. No more mice. Um yeah. Now I get to have coffee. Um, what do you get at Starbucks? I get an ice double tall white mocha. Okay. Okay. Nice. You rattled that <laughs> off. You know. know. <laughs> sometimes with whip, sometimes without whip. Do they spell your whip. name right? I give my, my <laughs> Starbucks name is Megan. So. Oh my God. That's amazing. But even that can be misspelled <laughs> sometimes. I know. Exactly. They're like, uh, with an H, I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> The time now is 3 p.m. and Tal begins working on offline analysis with MATLAB while she waits for the virus from today's experiment to express. Tal and MATLAB have a love-hate relationship that first blossomed when she was studying for a PhD. We'll delve more into the importance of programming and her advice on how to tackle it all in Tal's advice episode. But just to give you a taste of what she deals with every day, thank goodness for Rob. I love math in general. I tutored math in high school and college. I loved it. I only took up to Calc 2, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. And so when I started um, this MATLAB class, I was like, oh, you know, it's linear algebra. How, you know, I had never taken linear algebra, (laughs) but that's kind of the language. That's the math that 
MATLAB uses. Mm -hmm. And so like things, simple things that I wanted to do with math, which is like divide or multiply, I didn't know how to do because I didn't have the skills. I had no programming. I had no linear algebra. And I was like, this is, you know, it's like, it was a terrible combination. Oh, no. um, it almost like destroyed my relationship with math. Oh, um, no. So I got... Things uh, are good, though, yeah. between you and math. Yes. That's well, good. better now. Better but, now. you know, it, it was... It's complicated. It was tough. Yeah. And um, I will also say that coming into a lab that needs MATLAB is mm -hmm. very intimidating. I was very intimidating. I intimidated. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it. Um and I know that I will never be as good as someone with the programming background, but I can do a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it was important to me to learn the little bit that I could, you know, although I did have the major mental block of being like, this is going to be impossible for me. I'm never going to get there. But I will say that, you know, like a little bit of like imposter syndrome. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, I also would say in the lab, when you're learning something new, there's always a little bit of a mental block, at least for me, that's like. I'm not, you know, like this is going to be really tough to learn. But then once I actually get in it and I learn it, then I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Right. Um, MATLAB is still like, we have a love-hate relationship, I would say, <laughs> but um, I'm getting better at it. And I actually That's kind good. of enjoy it. Nice. Um, there's, what's nice is that a lot of people use kind of the same techniques. And so there are like um, scripts that are available online that you can download yeah. as packages, which is awesome. And, um, but then you have to apply them to your own work and sometimes they don't work. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember one day I have two people that I work with that are very good with computers. Um, and I found something that didn't work with my code and I didn't, that didn't work with the videos. And, um, I ended up having to email the person who made the code mm -hmm. and he was like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and change this. And my two friends were like, you found a bug in the code. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, you found a bug. And I was like, no, I just, I found something that doesn't work with my video. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, that's a bug. And I was like, oh, okay. That's so, and the video is what you're, you're taking, um, when you inject the non-toxic virus. So that's right? what or? I take after the virus is done oh, and gotcha. it's being expressed. Okay, yeah. Cool. So Great. that's like when the mouse is behaving and all the um, gotcha. neurons are firing. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so that, I'm, cool. Exactly. I'm trying to analyze those videos. Sweet. Um, yeah, so that whole day, I, anyone that I knew that was in engineering, I was like, hey, I found a bug in my code today. <laughs> I still I still don't really know what that That's means. But <laughs> That's so funny. And you took MATLAB first when you were uh, for your PhD program? Yes, okay, yeah, cool. and that was one of the required courses. Gotcha. Yep. How did you tackle first learning it? I mean, did you come out of that? doesn't seem like you came out of that class with a like ground comprehension. No, of it, de definitely not. I didn't, I still, I know, I know like buzzwords and that's it. <laughs> and, um, so, so I, Rob, he's one of the MD PhD students in the lab. He is like, he's one of the people that I mentioned that's very good. And he, um, has a programming background also. And he went to Cornell for undergrad. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's amazing and probably has like the most patience in the world you could possibly imagine because he helps everybody in the lab that doesn't have programming experience in that I can't imagine how hard that must be right. for him, um, but I'm being one of those people, but I'm lucky that I sit right behind him. Oh, so nice. I can pester him. <laughs> I try not to do it too right. often. Um, but it's so nice. Yeah. To... It started, it started at the beginning with, you know, he was very hands-on with me, but then I got to a point where I was like, well, I don't want to bother him all the time. And I would try and work through these things because oftentimes there are just small manipulations in the code that will then allow it to mm -hmm. run properly. Um, and it is gratifying to find that without his help because, yeah. you know, as sometimes I would see him be like, oh, this is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. And so now I try to do that myself. And then and then eventually I get to a point where I can't figure it out. And sometimes he'll sit down with me. And he can't figure it out either, which, <laughs> makes, which makes me feel pretty good. That's like, OK, it wasn't like a super easy fix. Right. And I could have figured it out myself. <laughs> That's awesome. And then that just goes back to what you were saying about the lab dynamic yes. and how everyone's like helping each other out. That yeah. must be really really awesome exactly. to work things through. Yep. Cool. Uh, uh, so 4.30, I think that brings yeah, us to, so, right? Yeah. So eventually I, I'll get, so I'll, I'll get to a point where I can't figure out what's going on. Rob will come trying to help me. He can't figure out what's going on. I'm like, okay, this clearly, this problem's not going to be solved today. I don't have the bandwidth for this anymore. I'm frustrated. Like I'm, I'm done. I'm, we're shutting down the computer. I'm going <laughs> home. Um, so, yeah, so so then I take off um, to go pick up my son. And so he goes to bed at 7.30, so I try to leave 
to pick him up by five because mm-hmm. you know like I, you now see that i don't get that much time with him during the day and that's Definitely. that's really hard mm-hmm. so i try and pick him up by five so at least get a couple of hours with him before he goes down for the day um so i go pick him up at five and we're home by five thirty, and we get to hang out until his bedtime routine starts at seven now it's 7.30 in the evening, their son is sleeping, and Ta and her husband finally have dinner in front of the TV. With the volume on 10 and subtitles on. You don't want to wake up the baby. <laughs> we like eat dinner, so today we got sushi, um, and then just kind of hang out on our laptops before bed. Nice. Um, do you do any work, like research from home? Sometimes. Time, so or? sometimes what I like to do in the evening is kind of set up my schedule for either the next day or the next couple of weeks to just make sure I'm in line with all of the things that I need to do Sweet. and you know, check the bookings of everything because, you know, they have to be reserved in advance. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Cool. It takes tons of patience, passion and persistence to work in the lab. But if you keep your eyes on the published prize, it's all worth it. And there you have it. You just experienced a day in the life of a neuroscientist in her postdoc program. Be sure to listen to the final episode of this experience that did a life in the lab series, Tuz Advice Episode. We'll open her toolbox, share her college advice, financial guidance, and industry insight, including the one thing that neuroscientists should learn as early as possible to succeed. Thanks for listening. Each week, we bring you interviews from professionals in the jobs that you want, highlighting each guest's career experience on Mondays, a day in the life on Wednesdays, and their advice to you on Fridays. Visit our website, experienceadiddle.com, to find the show notes for this episode with all relevant links and photos. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook at Experience Adiddle. That's experience, A-D-I-T-L. And of course, we're here to help all students make more informed career decisions. Visit our website to read all Adiddle articles from all different jobs and careers interviewed, written, and published for students by students. You can sign up to join the Adiddle Army at experienceadiddle.com slash students and let's grow together. We want to pay for your textbooks. As an ongoing contest, at the end of each semester, we'll randomly pick a winner from our subscribers who wrote us a review and buy all of their textbooks. So hit subscribe and tell us what you think about the show. And remember, you will be great.